All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at it. We're uh, doing a little one-off here, non-crypto related. Just thought we'd do another beer review. I got a uh, bottle logic fundamental observation. We could talk a little bit about this. All right, it's displaying. So let's open this. I do know that a lot of um, cryptos and, uh, you know, everything can be hyped. This was quite a hyped beer back in 2016, 2017. Um, so it's out of Anaheim. It's called Bottle Logic. Uh, I'm pretty sure Leo's never had this. I thought I'd bring it to show him some beer fundamentals. Um, it's a good one. So basically, they call this their liquid brownie batter. Um it's a very chocolatey, but it's aged in uh, like four different bourbon barrels that they like rotate. Um, and then it's also aged on uh, Madagascar vanilla beans. This thing is amazing. Um, this thing was hyped. I mean, it was like getting like a 4.6 whatever out of five on like on ratings and untapped and beer advocate. I mean, it was it was wild. Uh, now that it's been released a little bit more it's not as like hyped up anymore um it's still very good they use it as like a base beer for like some of the other ones that they'll make they'll make like mocha stouts or like marshmallow stouts and like neapolitan stouts um but i thought it would be fun for him to try the original right um and it's still awesome i mean the vanilla comes through very well um once again with a stout it's um it takes a little bit of time to warm up, so I did leave it out in the fridge for just a little bit. Let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, I'm gonna rest. But a lot of these stouts like are high percentage. Let's see. So what are we looking at as far as ABV here? Fourteen percent. Fourteen. Fourteen's a nice round number, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Bottle Logic makes a really a lot of really good um, stouts and like higher end beers. Honestly, I mean anything over like eight nine percent is already pretty strong. I mean I like hazy IPAs and stuff, but like you know ten, twelve percent is already like pretty serious. Fourteen. Uh, I did have one this week that was sixteen, but yeah, generally speaking, this is already like pretty high. Uh, so it's an imperial vanilla stout. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. Now, getting into these 10 to 15 percent um, ABV alcohol, isn't that like wine almost as great like a wine quality style of a uh, alcohol level? Oh, definitely. Wine is sometimes like 12 to 15 percent. So, yeah, I mean, these you don't want to drink a ton of by any means. I mean, actually on the bottle, the instructions say to serve two eight ounces. I mean, this is not... A huge bottle um yeah it's like you know one point point nine so but uh 500 milliliters so let's see here oh here it is elijah heaven hill elijah craig will it will it um barrels cookie dough creme brulee sugar yeah it's good stuff you like it well cheers <laughs> wow that, i can actually taste the chocolate in it it's amazing and yeah it's really good it has like a chocolate almost like a coffee flavor after flavor to it doesn't it like i don't know it's just might just be my taste buds you know i've had so many different like uh mocha chocolate uh sorry coffee stouts that i maybe hints but i think that's just what like uh like the what a stout with a roasted malt and and the chocolate does to it is like of course it's like in that similar family but also maybe what you're tasting is the sweetness of the, of the vanilla beans um with the chocolate is like kind of makes a sort of pseudo coffee taste um it's awesome honestly it's one of my uh one of my favorites uh, go to uh, just oldie but goodie for sure so it's kind of hard to find i was able to actually there's a couple spots that's like you know a little more accessible if you know where to look but uh yeah
well, <clears throat> if I can describe this, it, it probably tastes like a like a mocha, and then they like splash it with a little uh, French, you know, creamer on it. You know what I mean? French vanilla creamer. It's amazing. I mean, I, and it has alcohol behind it. Can't complain. It's definitely like a dessert beer. It's very heavy. It's not something you want to be having with. It's not the first thing you want to drink if you're going to have like more than one. Definitely something to finish off with. But yeah, I mean, it's very like a lot of these beers are very rich. So I wouldn't recommend, um, yeah, trying to, you know, have this with a couple other ones that are this rich. It's definitely, yeah, you can have this and just be done or, uh, you know, whatever. But yeah, I'm really happy to see that they're releasing this every year. Um, sometimes I'll go to the brewery. Um, depending on the year, they'll do like uh, special ones. They actually do a coffee one. Uh, they did like a peanut butter one, which I really liked. Um, they did a Snickers one, which was awesome. So yeah, they they after a couple of years of making this, I think they just saw that they had like a really like home run beer. So they just decided to sort of do this one and just... Uh, continue to throw adjuncts and modifications in it they did it like a soup a souped up one where it was like two or three years in the bourbon it was like 20 percent. so yeah, i've had a they've had a bunch of them um i think my favorite version of this one is uh yeah it's like a mocha one with marshmallows that kind of like bounces at the end but you can actually taste the marshmallows pretty crazy but uh yeah fun stuff fun stuff all right, so I picture myself drinking this and also having a little side of a little bit of a tira, tiramisu dessert uh, while I'm drinking this. You know, don't drink coffee. Drink coffee with alcohol in it. That's what I say. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of, like, um, any beer that's Asian vanilla, Madagascar vanilla beans, but, I mean, they do Tahitian. They do all, all the different kinds. Um Typically, like vanilla beans and process, uh, I don't know if anybody knows, it's like pretty expensive to extract and everything. So, yeah, these beers will definitely run you a little, a little bit. Um, but you know, it's fun to do here and there every once in a while. Um, I thought for the for the show, it'd be fun to do. So, uh, just trying trying something different. Um, yeah, fourteen percent. It's no joke. <laughs> I don't know if anybody drinks anything, but anything after ten percent is like, be careful with yourself. Speaking of vanilla, um, natural vanilla, um, it's good and everything, but do you know where the artificial flavoring of vanilla comes from? Uh -uh. Are you ready for this? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Anal beaver gland. I can't deal with this right now. <laughs> That's what, America, stop <laughs> eating artificial <laughs> vanilla. Is that real? There's only one way to find out. Yeah, let's get a beaver. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, that's the second option. <laughs> that's the second option is get a beaver. But the first option is do your own research. Yeah, let's go. I don't, I don't have anything to comment about this one. <laughs> I really don't. Well, you know, if that's true, that's just that's out of control. I don't know. That needs to have an NFT. Um, <laughs> I can't. Oh. Were there any any beavers harmed in the process? Is the question. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, well, that's interesting. If that is true, I you know. Oh, look, it's already there. Oh well, well, unfortunately, Leo is correct. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like. I am not going to read that. You can if you're feeling so brave. I'm good. This is what happened. This is this is what I get for bringing something nice. Okay. <laughs> you know we can have fun facts here too man and it can't it can't just be all you know you know serious and everything we gotta, gotta relax you know take it easy and and realize that the world is one sick twisted place sometimes but drink it up cheers well thankfully this is real vanilla that's all i gotta say about that one i can't yeah no and if it was artificial, I wouldn't be mad at you, dude. The alcohol would kill it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol will kill it, man. Uh, yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to meet her. Yeah.
I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't keep that on the internet forever. I can't. You can't, man. You can't. You got to let it loose. <laughs> oh, no. What have, this has been a mistake. As a rest of uh, development test, this is a, I've made a huge mistake. Ooh. Hey, like a, like a wise friend of mine always said, uh, <laughs> life, what's life all about? Well, when you look at life in general, I think life is really just about the stories in life, you know, what you go through and you experience and become a story. And I think that says a lot in like dealing with uh, these uh, artificial vanilla <sighs> extracts. Um, there's a lot to say about that story. <laughs> Hey, ignorance is bliss. If you don't know, I mean, that's good, you know. Why are we still talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> onward, onward. Uh, so, yeah. So, so, hey, Alex, are you a Spider-Man fan? I, I feel like I'm being set up no matter what. <laughs> I'm not going to set you up, bro. I'm just, I'm just trying to be real right now because... Uh, well, the, the new movie, uh, Spider-Man, just came out. Yeah. I haven't seen it myself, but I heard a lot of good reviews and people that have watched it. And, you know, I've become a Marvel nut ever since I started my NFT journey. So I've been buying comic books and, you know, just, you know, getting immersed in the in the, in the the Marvel world. And, or what they call it the Marvel Universe. So what are your thoughts on the new Spider-Man? Like, what do you expect from that? Well, I've seen all the other ones and... Um Honestly, out of all the Marvel movies, the original ones, I don't know. I thought they were like, okay, I need to watch this because I love, you know, Marvel movies in general. But the last couple ones were pretty, pretty good. Uh, I heard this one is amazing. So I actually was going to go watch it the other night, but I got really busy. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've, uh, I heard it greatly exceeded expectations. So I actually, right before I, came over here watched the um second ending trailer to that movie which is um doctor strange's movie coming out next yeah. year which looks amazing so um any other good movies anything um as far as that like i haven't seen it I've, i'm with you i've heard a lot of good things i'm a big spider-man fan coming um, soon. i'm gonna watch it yeah, coming soon. I will re I'll review that and watch that. Um, but yeah, Doctor Strange is great. Perfect role for that actor. Uh, but what I was really impressed was the octopus. Like he's really good at his like his role. Like, I, <laughs> like you know, like with coming out with all his tentacles and like the way he acts. Like he's he's, he's a perfect role for him. But going into the whole like multiverse and all that stuff. That that just uh, it, it's interesting because uh, you know you, you look at the the uh, Spider-Man uh, multiverse with Miles Morales and everything, and when they, you know, when they come out with, you know, character development for Miles Morales in the multiverse, I'm gonna be interested, man, because that's like it's different. It's, it, you you got a Puerto Rican Spider-Man, dude. That's I like that, dude. It's it's different, for sure. I mean, uh, I love, I really like that comic book version. What was it where they had like 15 different Spider-Mans? Uh, the not sorry, comic book. It was drawn like a comic book, but it was a uh, cartoon. Uh, Enter the Spider-Verse yeah. a couple years ago. That was really good. So I think anytime, you know, you can expand and make something better. I think that's I think that's great. You know, a movie I keep thinking about is the new uh, 007 movie, The No Time to Die. That movie was awesome. And I saw that maybe within the month and I'm still thinking about it because it was just, it was so good. So I haven't seen that movie either, man. I've been like living in a crypto NFT rock or something because like I haven't seen any of these movies, but I do have the NFT poster of No Time to Die. So really? yeah, so yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, a yeah, a little tie in, you know, like I might, I might have not seen it, but I, uh, I hold their NFT poster, which is cool through vv app um but yeah so so are their posters uh yeah they do have all their posters on there they have a back to the future they have um shark um the steven spielberg movie um yeah. shark or was it 
Blood Shark is Jaws. Shark. Jaws. Shark. We're going to blank right now. Yeah, so they have Jaws, Back to the Future. They have um, a couple artists on there um, that actually remake posters. And they also have uh, their own line of posters, of movie posters. But yeah, so Vivi has a really good amount of influence in the pop culture because they have Designer Con, is like these artists that do a lot of pop culture stuff, pop, um, designer toys. They grab a concept toy like. Um, Ron English has a uh, Street Fighter, right? They have a, uh, um, what, what are the two Street Fighter guys? The, the red and the white one, uh, Ken, and, Ken and, and, and Ryu. I wore that shirt tonight. Yeah, weird. yeah. So they have a Ken and Ryu uh, action figure that's about like maybe two and a half feet tall um, in their pose, in their fighting poses. And um, Ron English actually made uh, uh, his version and put a grin on him, like a gold grin. Mm on their faces they look so awesome and they sell out within like hours on the website but like you know bringing up stuff like that like if they made another street fighter movie because they, they made a mortal Kombat movie i'm waiting for the street fighter movie to come out man because that's gonna be good i want to know who they're gonna cast in this hopefully they cast people like they did in mortal Kombat, people that aren't really famous and they're just like maybe they're famous in like in their origin and or their part of the world but like but yeah they have good acting cast and they're unknown because that would probably make it even better like mortal Kombat. i don't know if you've seen mortal Kombat, the new one i have i have i uh i did like that one i mean some of them you can't be super critical um it's just you know something like oh, okay they did it somewhat faithfully to what i remember and it's like good enough right like not every movie is to be uh critically uh sought after with under a monocle right like it's just like okay we're happy. We're happy that it's not, you know, mediocre or garbage. Like, yeah, that was fun. It was, it was pretty good, you know. So yeah. I think that's the way the way to go with that. Did you like it a lot? Yeah, you're a fan. Yeah, it was good. Uh, <clears throat> the way they started the origin from uh, Scorpion and Sub Zero's uh, little feud and everything, I never thought about that. It was really good going into the whole past into the, into the present and tying it all in together. It was pretty good. Yeah. And uh yeah, the, the fight scenes are amazing, graphics are amazing. I, I, I really liked it. Um honestly, I grew up with the original Mortal Kombat, which was like just straight up like recruit these guys, let's go to this deserted island and let's kill them type scene. And and that's the same thing with Street Fighter was like recruit these guys, take them on an island, have them fight to the death type thing. And um now that their character developing because they see the long term in it, I think that's awesome. Now I can't remember if was there a really good Street Fighter movie years ago, or was it terrible? It was was it terrible? I can't I can't remember. Like I remember just being like, "Wow," but I can't remember if it was good or bad. Um, was there a really good old um, Mortal Kombat movie years ago? There was there was one that was like really good, but I can't remember. Yeah, the, the Street Fighter one was bad, right? Yeah, yeah. Was, so yeah. The Street Fighter was bad. I think these came out in like the late nineties. Yeah. Late nineties. Yeah, late nineties for yeah. sure. Cause I was I was that was my prime of like action, you know. Spawn was another good one in the late nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good, dude. Um <clears throat> Spawn was good. And, and and if they make another spawn and it's not as good as the first one, I'm gonna be upset. But Spawn was good. Um John Leguizamo came out as the uh the, the clown looking character in there. It was pretty cool. Um I know. I can, tell. I can tell. I can tell. No, but, but uh, uh, yeah, those ninety late nineties, uh, you know, Marvel movies or action figure movies, or not action, but like Marvel or like video game movies. Um, they were. Uh, they even had a Super Mario movie with John Leguizamo, and I forgot the main actor who was. was yeah, that was kind of funny. It was yeah. kind of like a kooky type of like you know, let's give them this fantasy world and let's like you know be be what Nintendo is and just fun and you know non you know aggressive violence you know just for the family type of entertainment, which is I understand, but dude, Super Mario can be something great. Like, if you actually sit down and you plan it out, like, actually, it would be something great. Like, if you actually made it into, like, a world where, you know, they, how they're, they're making these movies and, and they're submersing them in these worlds, kind of like... like <clears throat> its own cinematic universe. <clears throat> its own cinematic universe. I think there's a possibility there. You want to touch more on that? Or you want to talk touch about the uh, Ninja Turtles movies? <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Man... They just heard it. Yeah, it's it's amazing, dude. They, they you know, fucking nailed it. Yeah, like, dude. Nothing else. Yeah, dude. Like, back then. It, it, yeah, oh, yeah. It's like uh, the original Ninja Turtles, man. You just, just legend. Like even my kid. He, 
even my kids like let's watch Ninja Turtles and I'm like I put the like the newer one with Megan Fox she's like nah not that one I want to see the, the original one I was like oh okay you know that's how um pop culture and like how like you know great it was uh as far as like the filming and casting and directing and everything and it was amazing like yeah. there's nothing wrong with that movie like I can watch it like once every month and I wouldn't complain you know so what would the Mario MCU or cinematic universe look like? You know, what, what we're be integrating. I need some Waluigi and Wario just because they're like fringe characters. They're the outcasts, right? Yeah. So I like, I don't think Waluigi has ever had any character development. What is this beer review? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> so this, this beer review is like, it started off with a beer review and then, you know, we kind of talked about the, the beer and everything, but then, you know, you, you talk about, you can only talk about beer so much where you get into subjects that pop in your head and we're just going with it, man. We're just like, whatever pops in our head, we're going to roll with it. You know? And then that, that was my thing was like, I had this in my head. Alex had this in his head. And like, we just like it's great. ignited the fire. It. Now we're just, you know, full throttle right now going at it. But this super going back to the super Mario, super Mario, man. Wow. The world's I, it's one of those like universes where you can just, you know, it'd be like a metaverse style where you just go in there and you can go to these worlds and these lands and just, you know, you have all these characters that all meet together or you can have their own like individual character development and go on for years with this stuff. It's, it's awesome. You know, I had a weird thought of like, I don't know if you've seen super Mario maker. It's kind of new on like the Wii U switch. There's been a couple versions, but like, essentially you can make your own levels right and uh like people on youtube like just like traumatize other people with like super hard levels it's really funny to watch some of them it's like you have to beat your own level to upload it so other people can play it so they'll play it like 700 times until they beat it because it's so like sadistic right so it's just really funny to watch people like be in pain watching and playing these levels but i like that idea of build your own world after mario the mario cinematic universe establishes itself right then you can start doing uh you know what happens if players get involved and start making their own uh their own levels and mario gets thrown in like what is this you know i i i, I like this idea yeah yeah i mean that's what the metaverse is it's just grabbing a little bit of everything and just piling it on in this verse you know um it's going to be crazy. Uh, so Universal is currently building a theme park right now for Super Mario. Oh, really? Yeah, they're building one. Um, Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, they're building it. Um, at last time I was there, it was actually in March before they had the lockdown. Because I think the lockdown happened mid-March. And I was there at the yeah. beginning of March. And I actually saw the building that they're building. And they're building this ginormous building which is kind of like uh, if anybody that's ever been in Universal Studios, you go down to the bottom lot section at the very bottom, you take the escalators all the way down. They have Jurassic World, they have the Transformer ride, and on to the left of the Transformer, they have Mario World, which is gonna be like this, uh, they're really known for their uh, screens, you know, their screen rides where like you get on a ride and have these screens and yeah, it's like a Simpsons ride type yeah. thing where it's on a track system, but then it also has screens everywhere where it immerses you in, 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 in the ride. Um, they're going to have, believe it or not, a Mario Kart version of that, dude. You get to yeah. sit on his Mario Kart and you're traveling around a track system and you're throwing mushrooms and, and shells and getting stars and everything. It's going to be wild, dude. It's like the Buzz, is it like the Buzz Lightyear ride maybe at, uh, you know, yeah, it's, at Disneyland. it's not Disneyland, California Adventure. Oh, California. Yeah. So you, um, you know, shoot all the targets and yeah, it's, uh very interactive I, I i wonder how interactive some of these rides can be right um it's fun stuff though i like that i'd like to see more for sure promising things promising things yeah i just can't wait till they get going i i guess like uh they have a universal in like japan and they actually or japan or china i can't remember where but they actually have it open and they actually have a whole like mario world so universal studios hollywood is like uh, kind of like Disneyland. It's like really small compared to like Orlando. Yeah. 
Orlando Disneyland is ginormous. They have like freaking acreage of just swamp land that right. they put, you know, theme parks in. And uh, <laughs> so, so I can't imagine how like the swamp land Mario world is going to be, man. It's going to be huge. Yeah. I, I know like there's Disneyland Japan and everything too. And I don't know how big that is. I've, I've looked it up before, but I can't, I can't quite remember. Yeah. I mean, once you realize you have such a good, like, name and the potential for everybody in the world we're talking about crypto but you're talking about disney you know internationally known right it's definitely uh huge that you can buy up space right and just make a huge park because you know people are going to come you know it's interesting you know the the interest is there it's just you know like the anaheim uh you know disneyland it only has so much space and i know they've added a lot to it but you can buy up like couple you know square miles of of place in china or japan and throw in a, a you know amusement park a lot of people are going to come and enjoy it and you have the space to keep building so yep yeah man, it's, uh, crazy stuff for entertainment and you know attractions out here in the world um uh, yeah it's about it it's about it man i mean uh you got anything else to add to this? Thank goodness this is an artificially flavored vanilla. That's all I got to say. Yeah, because uh, if you don't know what that is, I suggest you look it up, but in your own discretion because it's pretty nasty. Um, well, um, so what do you think? Finishing thoughts? Finishing thoughts are this uh, bottle logic. Uh, let's see what it is. Bottle logic. Fundamental, uh, observation. in, in, fundamental observations. Imperial vanilla stout delicious it's like coffee and vanilla bean like with like a hint of alcohol a little bit of bourbon a little bit of bourbon it's amazing yeah i like it yeah. you always surprise me with this stuff man it always come up with this crazy like you know i found this rare beer that was made in 1895 and i want you to try it i'm like dude let's go yeah if i found some bourbon from 1985 i think i would sell it for a billion dollars um but uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I said, I've known a lot about this stuff, and I'll keep bringing some fun beers over uh, because I've been spoiled myself. Shout out to Mikey and Jacob that have uh, hooked me up pretty good over the years, and uh, yeah, we'll keep keep doing this. Uh, I got some fun ones lined up already, so uh, enjoy. Hopefully, you enjoy the beer review. Um, out of five, I don't know. I could easily give this over, you know, four and a half, probably some. You know, I've had so many insane beers. I, I had a beer that was aged for 16 months in bourbon and then 10, 10 months in cognac this week, a stout, which was just like the craziest thing I ever tasted. So even though this is exceptional, I've still had, you know, I've still had better. I would give this a four and a half out of five. What are your thoughts? I give it a 10, a 10, 10 out of 10. There you go. Cause it's amazing. I'm out. <laughs> See you later, guys. Have a good night.